is John Lynch the right man to, to lead this team as a general manager moving forward, do you think? So I've never really complained about John Lynch. Um, more so because I, I don't think he uh, I don't right. think there's a lot to attribute to he's doing wrong. But I'm going to say no, because okay. I, I was going through it a little bit last week. I tweeted about it. I think John Lynch in the media gets this team into way too much trouble because he feels an obligation to be nice to the media and give them stories. And he gives them the wrong stories that keep biting him in the butt. I mean, let's go down the list of the famous John Lynch post-draft quotes. Yeah. 2017. We would have taken Reuben Foster at three. Taking Reuben Foster at three, given his injury and his medical just history. Just volunteered it and with his pride. Character. Just, was, vol- just puffed out. Yeah, no now practiced with your yeah. first pick of your entire he had, he had a medical issue. He had a character issue. He had he got flagged medically at the combine and got thrown out of the combine for yelling at an intern. Yeah, no, there were there were issues. And there, and if you go watch Reuben Foster's Alabama film, it's as good as any linebacker that's come out in the last 10, 15 years. There's a reason he was still available at number yeah, 31. He, ran, in he, that violently. he was good. Yeah. Yeah. He, there's a reason he was still available at number 31. That's right. That's right. Teams had had questions. Okay. About but Ruben there's, Foster. but there's so many more. Reuben Foster so was a right? 20, 2018, according to John Lynch, you know, a lot of people in that draft impressed him, but the three most impressive players in that draft was Sony Michelle, who's on his second team. Mike McGlinchey, who's an average right tackle, I and Derwin this. James, who's a very good player who's consistently injured. That That's a famous John Lynch uh, 2018 yeah. quote. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to pull him up just in Go case ahead. I don't Go miss ahead. any. This is gold. This is gold. I, these are, and to me, these are just – you cannot have these quotes to me as a GM. I just think you're better off not saying I mean, anything. and what you said about Kinlaw and Ayuk. So, okay, the next one, of course, is the Colton McKivitz magical draft plan. If they didn't get Trent Williams, Colton McKivitz was part of the plan to be their left tackle That's in cr- 2020. True. Like, That's what? True. Yeah, they what? said that. They said that. Uh, like we would have taken Jalen Moore right now, except Jalen Moore actually can do it. We would have taken I, Ayuk at three or 13. Yeah, he said that. That one was that one is rough, especially when you look at the fact that I don't know how you can look at Ayuk. I'm sorry, I love Brandon Ayuk. I liked loved what he did his rookie season. He has never been a better wide receiver than CD Lamb, so I I don't know in no. what estimation. And the thing about was. Ayuk is I, there's a lot that he did that that I liked and I could see the fit, but I also watched his All 22 in college of him playing Cal and some dude named He's Cam Bynum. Press. Yeah, I mean some dude named Cam Bynum, Cam Bynum, who's I don't think is in the NFL. Just, you know, pressed him. And Ayuk was like, oh, well, I guess I'm out of this game. That happened. And I was like, hmm, first round pick, huh? You could probably get someone in the second round who's just as good or better. Right. And then do the, that. Vol- the volunteering of – I mean, this one's kind of him and Kyle Shanahan, but volunteering that will yeah. him and Ayuk were Shanahan's two favorite receivers in the draft. You look pretty stupid when Justin Jefferson is already a top 10 receiver in football and he's by far the best receiver in this draft and you didn't even think he was a top two receiver in that draft. Now that one, that's a that's a big red flag so to me thing, because quick. you want to talk about a system fit. I'm going to say real quick, real quick, like with Lynch, we don't know what he does, but if he's in, if the draft record is attributed to him, it's not a good draft record. If free agency is attributed yeah. to him, it's not good. And then it's, if we're cynical and say he's basically just a voice, he's there to talk and make the organization look good, he's not even doing that well. Because every time he talks, he puts his foot in his mouth. He says it's too much about Brandon Ayuk or takes the wrong and, tone or all the things. worst one, right? Which leads us to the worst one. You're coming back from Justin Fields' pro day, and Kyle Shanahan was scheming, already drawing up plays for Trey Lance. Like, why do you no say that? No one believes that, like and this? why did you say that? Yeah. Yeah. What what happens tomorrow if Trey Lance busts and Justin Fields is a superstar? Yeah. Why? Why? Yeah. You yep. you and Kyle Shanahan look like the two biggest idiots in right. the world. There's yeah. I, there's no other way to say it. Information and again. That's, to make that's yourself where, look smart. That's where I I think this organization has actually reached the point where John Lynch can't be put in front of a mic because he saying, says man. too many stupid things. I don't know what his job is. Or he has one job and it's to talk, and he's not doing it. Unnecessary. Yeah. I think he, look, I, I don't look if they just fire John Lynch at the end of this, um, that's not enough. I, I I think that's kind of like he's not important enough. I don't think he makes high level decisions, but I don't think he I think he's gotta go, even though he's like kind of lower down the ladder. 
I think he's got to go, man. I'm not sure he he's having and, a positive impact on this team. And philosophically, right? They 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 ad nauseum keep waxing poetically about this defensive line. We're gonna build this team from the defensive line. Through six weeks, this supposed good defensive line is not dominating games at all. No. You want to know? Everybody points to this secondary, but outside of Nate Bosa and some good play from Eric Armstead, though you know you would solid. It's not been good. Solid. No, it's not been good. You've no. gotten D- Kinlaw has been hurt. DJ yeah. Jones has been okay. Street yeah. has been inconsistent but solid, I guess. Yeah. Gibbons has not lived up to what Gibbons used to be. No. Um, uh, Kerr has not been good. Mohurst, what does he do? Arden, Arden Key. Key. I mean, what have you gotten? This team is supposed to be built from their defensive line and their hey, defensive Jordan line Will is coming back. Games. Was he coming back? Didn't he have a six game suspension? Was he coming back? It's, it's, I, it's, I, I, I have no words because I'm so sick of being gaslit as a fan um, to all these things that we believe in these things as an organization, but they just keep putting their foots in their mouth. They keep contradicting themselves. They keep point painting this picture. Like they have a real plan and they have conviction in their plan and they don't have conviction in their plan and they don't have a real plan. And I'll end this topic on John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan with this. The 2019 coaching cycle was one we all clowned. We clown because if you knew Sean McVay, you got hired in that coaching cycle. The three coaches that were much maligned, Cliff Kingsbury, Zach Taylor, and Matt LaFleur are currently 18 and three. And the one thing both the one thing Cliff Kingsbury, who many people consider one of the worst coaches in football, he got right is the moment he was hired in Arizona and they had the number one overall pick. He was confident. He had conviction that he was going to take the little super freak from Oklahoma, even though he was 5'10", and he went with that plan, and that's why they're successful in 2021. And Kyle Shanahan's big plan was to get Kirk Cousins, and Hold he's on. been had Hold reservations on. about Jimmy Garoppolo since 2018. John Lynch, they're not sure, blah, blah, blah. And here we are in 2021, and Jimmy Garoppolo has still been the starter for four years. Please. Yeah. I mean, look, this is the issue with – I don't know if it's John Lynch's fault, but you talk about the Niners not having a plan. Okay. They're not developing their young players, and they have no first-round pick the next two years. That's bad. Ambry Thomas, Aaron Banks, Trey Sermon, Trey Lance all can't get on the field. Diamador Lenore. And in a lot of cases, like, I don't even know why. Like, Diamador Lenore and Ambry Thomas can't play and learn so – Freaking Drake Kirkpatrick and Josh Norman, who won't be on the team next year, can go out there and suck. That's what's happening on this team right now. They're not developing young guys, and they have no first-round picks the next two years. Where's the plan there? They're still like, hey, we're going to compete with our vets. No, you're freaking not. What's the plan? Someone has to get fired for this, Vish. Sorry, I got worked up again. Let's answer some questions. Yeah, no, uh, I, I, I don't know if firing someone's the issue. I feel like they're in too deep, honestly. Uh, with yeah. these guys where they just have to play it out. I, I think the biggest issue with the firing, and I, I think we might touch on it a bit later, but I think that the fans can really pressure Jed York into firing. Oh, we're going to talk about it. We're yeah. going to talk about it.